Bitcoin has seen a steep correction to 66,000 over the last few days. How low can Bitcoin go and what are the short term and macro charts looking like? Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are going to be discussing Bitcoin from a short term, a macro and a monthly perspective, discussing the recent correction on Bitcoin, how the short term charts are looking, where Bitcoin is likely to move to next, when this correction is likely to end and how the macro charts are developing in terms of the overall trend. So we have a whole bunch to be talking about today, guys. It is going to be a very detailed video. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, go ahead and join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. You can see a whole bunch is posted in here daily. If you're interested in taking your trading to the next level, join us on VIP. We post trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so much more. You'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chart and education chat, our help, our trade setup, our video, and of course, our news chat. If you're interested in joining our community of over 640 members, contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel for more information by uh, clicking my name or clicking these links for more info. Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive on in to the video. So, Obviously, we usually start with market data and the broader markets, and we'll get into that in just a moment, but a quick overview of what has happened in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin has seen a pretty brutal correction from that 73k high, and it's caught a lot of people off guard, but if you recall back to this post in Telegram, we go all the way back to this post discussing recent corrections from prior retests of the prior all-time highs from prior cycles. We can see this particular chart here. In this chart, it did show you that usually or generally when we retest our prior all time high levels on the macro chart, we generally end up seeing a rejection. We're going to take a deeper look at this chart today going over in particular this 2017 cycle. We saw a very similar thing play out. We saw the price action break above that dotted trend line, which is the all time high, only then to see a 32% correction before a continuation upwards. We're going to be discussing what this means in regards to the current price action, are we seeing a similar thing play out? And if we are, where could Bitcoin go according to this same structure? We'll be discussing the short term charts in massive detail, talking about what they are looking like, what you should be watching out for, and how the price action is likely to develop, the key support and resistance levels, and our bullish and bearish targets. And of course, discussing the weekly candle as it is starting to look a little grim. So let's go into the market data. Starting on the market data, 24 hour volume is down 35%. Of course, we are in the weekend now, so it is normal for volume to drop. We're sitting at 230 billion. As for 24 hour liquidations, they are down 17.27%, but they are still incredibly high, sitting at 525 million. Of the 525 million, a massive 80% of 440 million have come from long positions and 85 million have come from short positions. So we can see, although there hasn't been much volume in the market, we're seeing a whole bunch of liquidations, of course, as a whole bunch of people were overexposed in these late longs as Bitcoin broke over the prior all-time high and the market is now flushing it out. Remember, the market can't continue up forever. It does need to take breaks. It does need to have pullbacks before it can reset and continue its trend. Moving over to the broader markets so of DXY, has saw, has seen a little bit of a bump up following the CPI and PPI data. We saw the price action 
on the DXY move up just a small amount to 103. Of course, we are still sitting underneath this major downtrending diagonal resistance. Again, if we remain under this downtrending diagonal resistance, we are going to be in a downtrend expecting continuations to 101 and potentially the yearly low. If we break above this level, this is going to be actually be pretty bearish for the stock market and potentially for Bitcoin and could result in broader corrections across the markets. And again, if the DXY rises, that is going to be bearish. We do have a very important bit of information coming out soon and that is going to be the Federal Reserve interest rate decision. You can see this is actually coming in around three days from now. So massive, massive event in terms of where the DXY is likely to go and how the markets are going to respond. Of course, if we get an interest rate decision that we are going to see a pause, we're likely going to stay on the same trajectory. If we get a reduction, we're going to see a bullish, a very bullish event. And if we get a hike, it is going to be very, very bearish. But more importantly, if we do get that pause in the interest rates, it is much, much more important. The narrative that has been established remains intact. If we get the Federal Reserve meeting after the interest rate pause and they announce that they are not planning on dropping interest rates anymore, the market will respond very, very bearishly. If they stay true to their current narrative, which is they eventually expect to drop interest rates during the 2024 period, it is very likely that this will be a null event and the markets will continue in their current trajectory upwards as the perceived systematic risk in the market has been unchanged. Let's go ahead and jump over to broader markets. So S&P 500, no change, looking okay, sitting above that 5,100 level. We're going to keep this lesson short and sharp. A drop below this level will result in a retracement to 5,000. 5,000 is a key level of support. If we lose 5,000, we're looking bearish. We remain above 5,000. We expect continuations upwards. As for the Dow Jones, exactly the same thing. We lose 39,000 over here. We can see short-term weakness develop to 38K. It is if we lose 38K, will we look quite bearish for a correction to our prior all-time high. Again, provided we remain above 38K, we're expecting continuations to 40,000. Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get into Bitcoin. A quick word from Bitcoin and BX before we do. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay team, let's go ahead and get stuck into Bitcoin. So much to talk about. And in today's video, we're going to start with the short term price action. What is happening with the short term price action? What are the key levels you need to pay attention to? Let's get into it. So as you can see over here, guys, we have got our short term chart. We are on the one hour chart over here. Our, our rectangular boxes are our key levels of structural resistance and structural support. I would like to go ahead and bring your attention to these three levels. First and foremost, the 60.8 to 60,000 level, okay? The 66,000 level, which we are currently retesting, and of course, that 69,000 level. If we look at the higher time frame charts really quickly, we can see these levels correspond with high time frame levels of support and resistance. Primarily, the 60,000 level is going to correspond with this area of support on the macro chart. This is going to be our 60 to 61,000 area of major support, okay? And then the current 66,000 all the way up to that 69,000 is that high time frame area of resistance, which we are challenging and have been challenging between these ranges. So between these two ranges is a high time frame area of resistance, which corresponds to this area on the chart. That is the distance between the weekly closing price and the highest point of which we reached in the 2021 cycle, a major point of resistance. If we delete everything in the chart really quickly, what you can actually see is Bitcoin rejected on the weekly chart from that exact all-time high we did not we were not able to break a weekly candle above that level as of right now but we have not broken a weekly candle back below that prior all-time high as well 
So we're sitting in this major area of resistance between these two areas of confluence on the macro chart. If we are able to break above a weekly candle over here, we're going to look very, very bullish. If we break a weekly candle below here, this could result in a correction to 60,000. We'll discuss both those scenarios in a moment when we come back to the higher time frame chart. So that's just to give you some context. So looking at the smaller time frame chart, first and foremost, guys, if we do inevitably drop below 60,000 in the short term, this is going to be be very, very bear, uh, very, very bad. If we look at the VIPV, we can see a massive gap is developed between that 60,000, more specifically our 62,000 to around uh, 59,000 and below to 52K. So if we do lose that 60,000 level, we expose ourselves to all of this potential downside risk up to around 52,000 if that level is lost. Now, I do not think we're going to see that correction. However, if we do lose 60,000, that becomes a range of which is possible for the price action to reach. It doesn't mean it will. We could very well find support at around that 58K area and develop a new support between these two peaks on the VIPV, which we do generally do when we move between low historical resistance ranges. However, it is important to note on the VIPV, if we do lose 60,000, the applicable range of possibility goes to around 52. So that's a very broad uh, range of which the price is actually correct within if it is reached. However, as you know, Support is support until it is not. And until we break below those levels of support, the possibilities for bounces are more significant than the possibilities of continuations in the trend. So let's take a look at the shorter time frame. What we can see in the short time frame, we have come back down to retest a major area of support. If you're watching our channel, you would know the prior lower or high, should I say higher low right over here at this 56, uh, should I say 65, sorry, uh, to 66. 65 to 66 area of support right over here that we retested for many, many days before we continued upwards, okay, is an area of which we have major support, which we retested for a second time. We are now retesting for a third time. Of course, if we do break below this level, the range of possibility opens up to that 60K target. Again, if we look at where we are retesting, we are retesting the weekly high of that 2021 candle close. So this is actually a major area of support we are retesting right now. And it's actually crucial we remain above this level as if we fail to remain above the level, we close the weekly candle below the weekly high, resulting in potential deviation, which could result in a continuation down to 60 and most likely will. So it's imperative that we actually remain above this level at 65.2 to 66K on the shorter time frame and more importantly on that weekly chart. So let's discuss the possibility of a reversal for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is currently in a downtrend, obviously, right? We are obviously in a downtrend. We've been in a downtrend ever since we uh, created again that first lower high back over here around two days ago. So we had this high, we had that rejection, retest the support, bounce, lower high, bang, we're in a downtrend. Okay, so now we've been in this downtrend, we're following this downtrending diagonal trend line as reflected by this black trend line. While we remain ab below this trend line, the trend is expected to continue downwards, again, into areas of support. So we are now in an area of support and thus we expect our reversals to develop up into this trend line, provided this support level holds. If the support level breaks, we expect the price action to continue the trajectory along this trend line to our next area of support. So if we want to see a correction, or sorry, should I say continuation upwards, we need to see a few things. We need to see one, structure, two, trend, and three, strength. So structure, do we have structural breakouts? Okay. We would need to remain above our structural level support, okay, which we are currently retesting. Trend, do we have a trend breakout? No, we don't. We need to break above this downtrending diagonal resistance. If we break above this downtrending diagonal resistance, we are officially in a uptrend game. And three, strength. For us to validate that we have broken above this level and we are in a uptrend, we need to see the RSI break above this level of on the RSI as our equal highs, okay? This high here is responding to this high. This high here where the trend initially started is responding to this equal high. So a break of this level will tell us that during this area of correction, momentum has flipped it positive and we will see a reversal that will result in a continuation upwards. Where are we looking for? 72,000, 70,000. Why 72,000, 70,000? Again, we are looking for gaps and peaks on the VIPV. 70,000 is a nice gap and of course 72,000 is going to be that higher or should I say 
uh, lower high that we created when that trend, that downtrend initiated. So those are our two targets. Of course, guys, if we do break back upwards, the charts are going to look very, very bullish again, as that is going to result from a bounce on that weekly high. And of course, the short term charts are going to look very, very good. If we break the charts down even further, if we look at what is happening right now, we can see that the price action okay, is creating a very, very obvious bullish divergence. We have got downtrending price action, uptrending momentum. So we can see a similar pattern to what we would notice in a falling wedge structure. A falling wedge structure is when we have a downtrend with two downtrending trend lines that are converging. Converging meaning they are squeezing, they're getting tighter. What is that a reflection of? It is a reflection of bearish uh, exhaustion. So when we see bearish exhaustion near an end of a trend or a structure that represents bearish exhaustion, the opposite of bearish uh, exhaustion is that there is a bullish strength. The bull are stepping and buying, exhausting the sellers. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing early indications of that, which again leads us to believe we should not expect this area of support to be lost until it is lost. We are expecting a, a, a continuation back through this level and upwards when our validations are met. So a lot of people are panicking. A lot of people are seeing the chart now thinking, we're all going down to 12k or whatever the hell they're thinking. I don't know. I don't watch other people, so I don't really care. But focus on the charts and let the charts guide you. Remember, the game isn't about predicting things. You're not, you're not a crystal ball psychic, okay? It doesn't matter. It's not, it doesn't matter if you predict what happens. What matters is you have a plan that you can execute no matter what occurs, then you can capitalize and make money on it. That is what matters, guys. What matters is you make money. So look at the charts, devise plans, look at entries, exits, targets, validations, invalidations for both scenarios, okay? Understand the context behind what is happening and then execute accordingly. That is how you trade. It's a game of probability. Only analysts care about being right. That's why you see so many analysts dying on their heels, holding their bearish or bullish narratives until, you know, pretty much everyone in the space is against them and they're just down so badly and they're still sticking to their, uh, to their biases. A trader, if they adopt that mindset, if they adopt the mindset of the inability to adapt, they will lose everything, okay? So analysts are not traders. Analysts do not adapt. Analysts hold biases. Analysts need to be right more than they need to make money. Focus on profits. Focus on process. Don't worry about any of it, anything else. Okay, that is all that matters. So let's move over now to the big question. And that is, you know, if Bitcoin drops lower, where could we go? And what, where could we go based on what we have seen in the past? So we'll talk now about, you know, what the technicals are saying, what the structural levels are saying. We've talked about where the price action is likely to go based on a price action analysis. But let's talk about based on a, a historical analysis. Have we seen what we are seeing now happen in the past? And if so, how can we use that data to potentially project what could happen in the future. Remember, history sometimes rhymes. So if we look back at the 2017 cycle, we saw a continuation past that all-time high, the dotted trend line. We saw a little bit of a continuation pass, and then we saw a steep correction underneath only for a continuation again. Now, this is actually very similar to potentially what we are seeing here, as in the 2021 cycle, we did not see deviation above the prior all-time high than a correction. We saw that rejection happen at the all-time high. So this is a very, very good uh, example of what we are potentially seeing here. So we run a quick formula, and that formula, if I go ahead and bring up my chart, uh, my calculator, it is simply going to be, we look at the distance, okay, from, or should I say the percentage change from the absolute low to the point of which we created that deviation high in the 2015, 16, 17 cycle. We take a look at the distance in the current cycle from the low to the highest point recently reached again above the deviation high of the prior all time high. Simply what we do is we divide those numbers by each other. So again, let's just go ahead and take this. So we take 378%, okay? We divide that by 706%, we get a number of 0.535, that is our ratio. Then we look at the percentage drawdown we had on that correction, 
Okay, so that correction is for a 32% correction. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply that number by 32.44, and that is going to give us our percentage drawdown that we would see if we saw the exact same thing occur as to what we saw in the prior cycle, accounting for the change in percentage growth. So obviously, the more growth we see, the larger the corrections we see. The smaller growth we see, the smaller the corrections we see on average. Everything's kind of based on a ratio analysis here. So we're looking for the ratio between the numbers that is going to be 0 0.53 and then we take that percentage and we apply that to the breakdown or from the all-time high so let's go ahead and drag our range 17 0.36%, that would take us to around 61,000 on the dot. So if we were to see a similar thing happen that we saw in 2017, we would see a correction of around 17.21% from the high, that would take us down to 61,000. Now those numbers line up because 61,000, look at 61,000, look where it is, it's right over here. It is the upper range of support of the 60 to 61,000 area of support. That tells us if we do retest this level, this is going to be an area of not only massive macro support from a structural level, from a technical level, from a historical level as well. So we are looking to bid these levels if we do correct down into these levels for potential reversals to develop. Zooming out even further, that 60 level, that 61 level, is again a macro area of support that we talked about at the start, represented by this area over here, that we would be retesting if we lose the weekly candle of the current area of support at 66 to 65k, we'd be expecting a retest of this area. So what is this all the same? It's telling you that the major area, the major place we need to hang on to on the higher time frame is going to be that 60 to 61k area. And as of right now, the 60 to 61k area is a realistic target. If we are to see okay, the potential strength that we are developing right now in the short term fade away and the bears, uh, the bears step back in, they could definitely push it down to this range. So thank you for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day, guys. We'll jump into this more tomorrow. We'll focus much, much more tomorrow on the total cryptocurrency market cap, as there's a lot to discuss there. We'll also go over the four-year cycle and talk about, you know, how the price action is developing on the monthly chart. Are we expecting continuations higher? Is a four-year cycle impacted by this correction? Yada, 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 all that extra stuff. And of course, the short term as well. So we'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys then. Cheers.